Amen. Good evening, everybody. Are you awake? Good, 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 good. It's good to have you back with us for our evening worship service here at Nairobi Central. And again, I'd like to extend a warm welcome, not only to those of you who are here, but for those of you who are watching online, wherever you are, from the folks back home in the Cayman Islands, they're just waking up, starting the Sabbath, when we are closing the Sabbath. Um, so we want to welcome all of you, and wherever in the world you are watching from, we're delighted to have you with us uh, this evening. Were you blessed this morning? Yes. Amen, 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 amen. The, the power of God's word, and we will be diving into it a little bit, a little more this evening again. And I um, just want to say how blessed my wife and I are to be sharing this meeting with you. This is my second trip to Nairobi Central, past Nambuchi. Ten years ago, uh, courtesy of your pastor, I was here. And as I watched the youth choir a while ago, I was wondering, how many of those young people were here ten years ago? How many of you guys were here ten years ago? All right. So my, all right, I want to see all the hands that you were here 10 years ago when I came here. Look at that. Oh, man. Come on, give me a round. Oh, you don't clap in here. I'm not too sure if you clap in <laughs> All right, well, we are, we're delighted to have you back. And um, I'm happy that you remain faithful with the Lord. Amen? You remain faithful with the Lord. That's tremendous stuff, tremendous stuff. I don't know how much longer the Lord will keep us here on earth, but for every day, we are just so grateful. All right, I'm going to share with you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. Um, tomorrow evening and, uh, and, and Monday morning. Today we dealt with that subject, the stone is coming. And in the next few minutes we'll be doing with the next, can we put up the next one for them? Um, the next slide, good. In a few minutes we'll deal with this big subject, blundering on the borders. That's coming your way in a few minutes. And then tomorrow evening when you get here, the subject is now hiring, get involved. That's part two of our theme. All right, so heaven is now hiring. We're going to talk about that tomorrow evening. Don't miss it. Make sure you're here. But the big question is, what's the qualification for being hired? All right, we're going to talk about that. And then on Monday morning, the big presentation uh, let's go, no, go back up there Monday morning. Uh, just hit it, the button again. And here we go. Monday morning, it is the subject, The Coming. Make sure you're here on Monday morning for that big presentation, The Coming. And then Monday evening, Monday evening, mm -hmm, big subject for us on Monday evening, why some people will not make it home because of procrastination is our big subject on Monday evening, um, procrastination. You don't want to miss that one, big presentation Monday evening. Then on Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, yeah, call me. You like that one? Yeah, you're laughing at that one. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Call me Peter. Get involved. That's what we're going to talk about on Tuesday morning. Tuesday evening, when you come, we're dealing with this subject. Tuesday evening, next one. This is what we have for Tuesday evening. Tuesday evening presentation. Call me Paul. That's on Tuesday evening uh, when you come. Yep, these are, we're going to crack the Bible to see the folks that God enlists to help us in his second coming. It blows your mind away. Gives you an opportunity to tell you that you can make it. And so on Wednesday morning, Wednesday morning, let's see what we have up for Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning, next slide. Let's see if we get Wednesday morning. Birth pains have begun. The birth pains have begun. That's a big powerful presentation on Monday morning. Yep, sir, that's a sign that the coming is already on the way. And then right after that in the afternoon, spot check at the pearly gates. Spot check at the pearly gates. There's some stuff God has to tick off. I wonder if we all make it through. That's going to be um, on, on, I think that's on Wednesday evening. All right, and then Thursday morning, yep, the last church. That's our big presentation Thursday morning. The very last church. What does it look like? Do you have membership in it? Is this it in Nairobi? The last church. We're going to talk about that. And then in the evening, let's see what evening. Yep, the evening. The last sign. 
going to say hello to AI. The last sign, that's going to be on Thursday evening. And then on Friday, and then on Friday, let's go Friday. Friday, day. just a verse away. How close is Christ coming? Just a verse away. We'll tell you which verse it is. It will blow your mind on Friday. And then, I think this uh, Sabbath morning, the silence in heaven. The silence in heaven. Oh, the silence in heaven. Your Bible says there was a strange silence in heaven for how long? Anybody remember? There is a strange silence in heaven for half an hour. We're going to find out why. Join me for that one. All right, I think that's the lineup. And, and then... We're going to start our presentation for this evening. Please join me as we turn our attention to the blundering on the borders. Your heads are bowed. So, Lord, we cannot open your words without we ask for your help. So please, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts now, we pray, and give us understanding in Jesus' name, amen. You choose to miss any of those presentations at your own risk. Make sure you're here. Blundering on the borders. Blundering on the borders. Um, I, am, I am particularly concerned. Maybe concern is a light word. Worried. that some of us who want to make it into God's kingdom will not be able to make it in. And I'll share you, with you the reason why. The Christian journey is often characterized in various forms. Stay with the preacher. One of them is it's a race that we're running. And we use it as a race. But more popular is the story in the Bible of the journey of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan and we often use that journey to illustrate our current experience journeying on this planet Earth, looking for the day when we will be taken from here to the promised land. Is the church still with me? Yes. If it is so, then that's where my trouble lies. That's where my worry lies. So come with me. And let's just recap a few things about that journey of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. Question number one. Does anybody know how many people were in that crowd that Moses was leading? What was the membership of the church at that time? Because that was God's church, yes? Yes? Yes, that was God's church. What was the membership? Anybody know how many people were in that, that crowd? Come with me. I'm in, the book. I'm in the book of Exodus. I'm in chapter 12. I'm in verse 37. Uh, just to keep you awake, what book did I say? Exodus. I'm in Exodus, second book. I'm in chapter 12. I'm in verse 37. Exodus chapter 12. I'm in verse 37. Exodus 12, 37. Here's what the Bible says. Then the, then the children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Sakoth. Ramesses is that district in Egypt that they were living. That's community. They journeyed from Ramesses to Sakoth. And help me read. How many? 
about 600,000 men on foot. And beside men were what? Children. No, no. So where were the women? Uh oh. They left. <laughs> Ladies, they left you out. They tend to always do that stuff. You're not in the census. S stay with me. Six hundred thousand men. Okay? I assume that some, if not most, of these men were married. Yes? Yes. And I further assume that most of them had more than one wife. Is that okay? Yeah, because Jacob, Jacob had two. Am I right? Yeah, he, he, married, he married the two sisters. Are, are we together? And these are all Jacob's sons. So I assume that, that the men, the 600,000 men, watch me, watch me, watch me. If each of those men had one wife, that would be another 600,000 women. That would be a total of 1.2 Million, million. If they had more than one wife, it is even more. But let's stay, let's stay at one wife. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so it would be at least 1.2 million. Now let's add in the children. Now, how many children do you think each couple had? <laughs> well, well, to give you a starter, Jacob had how many? Twelve boys. And a girl. So if each of these married couples have children, I think, it, can you imagine? Maybe 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, maybe. So if you have 600,000 couples plus their children, how many people is that? So, so you, can you see then that we are way over 2 million? Is that all right? Because I'm, I'm about to give an estimate based on this, just an estimate. I'm telling you, it's about 2.5 million people in everybody leaving Egypt. Is the church with me? Good, good, good. Verse, verse, verse 38, verse 38. Verse 38 says, verse 38 says something else. Can we put 38 up there? Genesis 12, verse 38 says something else. It, help me read. It says, a mix multitude Ooh. went up with them also no mixed multitude what's that that it was not just the children of Israel who left when they were leaving their Egyptian neighbors and co-workers and friends some of them decided hey we, we, we're not staying in Egypt because all these, all these ten plagues that just passed through here, they may come back again, so we're leaving town. So some of them left because they were escaping the plague, Ellen White tells us. Others left out of mere curiosity. They're just tired of living in Egypt, and so they want to go where these folks were going. Are we together? And the rest of them left because they were believers in God. So it was a mixed multitude of both the children of Israel and Egyptian together in the church. Is the church with me? A huge group, 2.5 million or more. And they journeyed from Ramesses. They crossed through the Red Sea. God open, oh, you know the story. God opened the Red Sea, allowed them to draw, cross over on dry land. Pharaoh's army coming after them. And when the army was in the middle of the Red Sea, God closed up at the water, destroyed the army. So they get rid of their enemies and they left town. Now, remember, 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 remember if you can, not a single person in that group knew where they were going because all of them were born. Come on, preach with me. All of them were born in Egypt. Not even Moses himself know where he was going because he was born in Egypt. So how will they know where to go? Oh, there was a pillar of cloud by day. Is the church with me? Yeah, because God was their pathfinder. God was their leader. 
And so the people, when the cloud moved, they moved. When the cloud stopped, they stopped. In the day, that cloud formed a shade of the sun so they could walk in sunshade. And in the night, it turns into a pillar of fire and gave them both light and, and warmth. Are you with me? God is taking care of them on their journey. When food ran out, God sent manna from heaven. When water ran out, God spoke to Moses. Moses spoke to the rock. Or at least he struck the rock. Water flew. All their needs were taken care of by God. Amen? So the Oh, folks in Nairobi, hear the preacher. They journeyed under the pastorship of God. Is the church with me? Oh, you didn't get it. They journeyed under the leadership of God. And they came to the end of their journey. I want Nairobi to listen to me. They came to the end of their journey they camped out on the borders of Canaan at a place called Canish Barnia they could look over and see the promised land and then something strange happened in the book of Numbers Chapter 13, verses 1 to 3, something strange happened. Numbers, turn your Bibles there. Because when you go home, I want your Bible to make sense. Numbers chapter 13. The Bible, something strange happened. The Bible says, and help me read, help me read. And the Lord spoke to Moses. Next verse. Verse 2, send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. For each tribe, from each tribe of their fathers, you shall send a man, every man a leader. Ooh. Stop, brethren, stop. When you read Bible, when you read Bible, you must stop and question it. Is that all right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Interrogate it, interrogate it. Question this, this does not make any sense at all. What, what, what? Th that verse does not make any sense at all. Nothing, no sense at all. Why? Ask yourself the question. It is God who promised these guys the land. Amen? It is before they left Egypt, God already know what he's bringing them. Why does God need somebody to spy the land that he already have prepared for them? Does God not know who is over there and what is over there? Hey, 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 by the way, from where he sits, he has already had a good view of the land. So who needs this information? Not God. God knew the Amalekites over there and the Jebusites over there and all the Amalekites over and all the Ites over there. So who need this intel? It, it was troubling until I went to until I went to, to the book of Deuteronomy. I think it is one verse twenty two where where Moses was recording. Moses says, "All of you ask me to send spies." So the idea of sending spies was not God's idea. God don't need no spy. It was, it was man's idea. God says, okay, since you all need to send spy, then send spy. So they decide to send spies. Brethren, take your time with me, because I'm going to take my time with you. I want you, the first thing I want you to do is Look who they chose for this mission. They're going to spy out the land that God promised them. Look who they chose. Answer. 
you must choose a man from where? Each tribe of their father you shall send a man. And not just any man, you shall send who? The leader. Hey, 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 hey. Stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. You're not going to send any and any man. For every tribe, 12 tribes of Israel, you are going to send a leader. Substitute the word leader for an elder. Am I coming home to you? This is the church of God sending on the borders of Canaan. <laughs> and we're going to spy out the land. And we can't leave, hey, 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 we can't leave this responsibility to any careless, uncommitted member of the church. Amen. We want to find somebody who is a leader. Some, hey, somebody who is well respected among his tribe. Yes? Yes? Somebody who have experience walking with God. Somebody who the people look up to. Is the church with me? Hey, 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 hey. So that when that leader come back and say, over there is red, everybody will believe him because he's a respected member of the church. Verse 3. Verse 3. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. Oh, help me read, help me read, oh, help me read. All of them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. Head! Oh, someone put it Head helders. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Are you having fun like me here? I'm having fun up here. Who are they? Head elders, 12 head elders, senior elders of the church. Senior elders of the church. Well, well, some of you know the story. They went over and they searched the land for 40 days and they came back to Moses with their report. I'm in verse 31 of, G of Numbers 13. Verse 31 gives a synopsis of their report. Verse 31. The Bible says, help me read. But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people over there for they are stronger than we are. It says, Moses, we went to look at the land. The land is really good. It is flowing with milk and honey. But, but, there are some problems over there. The people over there are strong. And we cannot stand up against them. So, so we have a problem on the borders. Stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. I'm in, I'm in verse 32. Let's go verse 32. Let's go verse. And they get, look at what the text says. The text says, and these 12, and these elders, well, you'll soon find out, 10 of them, they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land that God promised them. Are you with me? They, they, these 12 leaders, well not 12, we found out that two of them were not in agreement. 10 of them gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land that God promised them. Is the church still with me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, uh, 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 saying, here's what they report. They said, they said, they said, the land through which we have gone as spies let me read. Is a land that devours the inhabitants. What is that? In other words, the land 
that we go check out? It's a very serious, not only is the people big and strong, but the very land eat up the inhabitants. Ellen White says if that were true, they wouldn't come back over alive. And not only that, they said, they said, they said and we saw in it men who are giants. There, were, there we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak. Um, um, Goliath is a, is a family member of the Anak. And, and, and we were like grasshoppers in their, in their own sight. So we were in their sight. So the men said, hey, this, this mission that we have of possessing the land that God has promised is not going to work. This is a suicide mission if we ever go over there. So when the people heard that, there was trouble in the church. There was trouble in the church. Because the people said, all these years we have been traveling and God has been leading, how is it we come to a cul-de-sac? What do we do now? What do we do now? Because these are elders of the church. So what they say must be true. And it's not one of them, two of them, Three of them, four of them, five of them. It's not six of them, seven of them, eight of them, or nine. Ten out of the twelve. So, um, oh, dear God, it must be true. Ten holy men in the church leadership can't be lying like that. Must be true. So what do we do now? Well, chapter 14, verse 1 says, when the people heard it, you know, these people are tired of walking, man. They want to go home. And just on the borders, you're coming to tell us that we can't occupy the land. Anger stirred up inside of the people. And chapter, one, chapter 14, verse 1. Let's turn there. Numbers 14, verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. Numbers 14, verse 1. The Bible says, in Numbers 14, verse 1, turn your Bible. Look at the response of the people. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. You'll be, when the people heard it, the word of God says they wept. Can we get that on the screen? Numbers 14, verse 1. Here's what the text says. So all the congregation lifted up. Have you seen that? They, they lifted up their voices and they cried. And the people wept all night. They bawled. How could it possibly be? That we were led all these years. How could it possibly be that we were led? deceived and they wept and verse 2 says it's a, they, verse let's go verse 2 verse 2 tells us they did something else and all the children of israel and all the children of israel in verse 2 they complain against moses and they complain against aaron and the whole congregation said to them Oh, if only we had died in the land of Egypt. we wish to god we never left egypt only we had died in this wilderness May God kill us in this wilderness. Why has God brought us here to punish us on the borders? And they cry. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us, they said, to return to Egypt? And the next verse says, verse 4, can we read it softly? One, two, three, like kindergarten children. One, two, three. So they said one to another, let us select a new leader and we're going back to Egypt. The folks led by God, listen to the preacher, reach the end of their journey. And on the borders, just to step over, the devil set up a trap using the leadership of the church. And because the people put their trust in the leaders, 
the whole congregation, 2.5 million of them, rejected Moses, rejected God, says, we, are going, we ain't going to Canaan anymore. We ain't going to heaven anymore. Take us back to Egypt. The problem they have, I don't know how they plan to get back through that Red Sea because God ain't opening it again for them. <laughs> Is the church with me? And God was angry. God was angry with them. You could hear, you could hear the anger coming out of God. I'm, I'm in verse 11 of chapter 4, uh, chapter 14. I'm in verse 11, chapter 14, verse 11. Chapter 14, then the Lord said to Moses, then the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me? How long will they reject me? And how long will they not believe me even for the things that I've done? Look at what I've done for them. Why is it that they can't look at what I have done and put their trust in me? All these years, I brought them through the Red Sea. I devoured their enemies. I fed them in the night and day and carried them. And now one little test and they forgot everything that I have done for them. If I brought you so far, why don't you think I can carry you to the end? How long will I put up with this, Moses? How long? And God says, Moses, I'm going to destroy all of them and give you a new nation. Moses says, no, Lord, can't do that. <laughs> this is when man counsel God. Oh, you don't, you didn't get it. God says, I'm gonna wipe them off and give you a brand new nation. Moses says, No, Lord, can't do that. Because if you do that, the Egyptians will hear. That is because you can't manage them while you kill them. You won't too look too good for your reputation. <laughs> so Oh, Lord, this is when man counsel God. Watch me, watch me. And as big and mighty as God is, God humbled himself and took the counsel from Moses. What amazing God. He took the counsel from Moses. He says, okay, Moses. Now here's what I'll do. Read the chapter when you go home. Turn around the camp. Turn them around. Head back into the wilderness. Is the church with me? Yes, turn around the camp. Head back into the wilderness. And for every day that the spies were in the land spying, I'll give them one year punishment in the wilderness. 40 days they were over there spying. 40 years they're going to be in the wilderness. Until, until, until the carcass of every one of them rot in the wilderness. Moses turned around the camp into the wilderness and God says here's what I'll do every single man who's over the age of 20 will die in that wilderness they will never enter the promised land I will use their children to go in but not them except two two Caleb and Joshua 2.5 million people left Egypt. Only two made it in. Let me repeat that for you. Two, approximately 2.5 million left Egypt. Only two made it in. The whole church was lost on the borders. Even though God was above them in the day and night. Even though God fed them with manna. The whole church was lost. Except two. So preacher, why is that important for Nairobi today? Because, because you and I are again on the borders. Our journey is all but... Over. We saw it this morning in the prophecy. Is the church with me? And the devil has set up another trap again for the church. And that's why I'm sharing with you. So, come with me to the book of Hebrews. 
Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 3, your scripture reading, Hebrews 3, I'm going to take my Bibles over there, Hebrews 3, I'm reading from verse 12, Hebrews 3, take your time, verse 12, Paul is the author of Hebrews, there's a lot of arguments as to who the author is, well Ellen White settles it for me says Paul is the author of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 3 verse 12. Here's Paul writing. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you what? An evil heart of, of unbelief. Of unbelief. Of unbelief. In departing from the living God. Verse 13. But exhort one another how? Daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Paul warns, verse 14, for we have become what? Partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to where? To the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. As in the rebellion, I mean verse 16. Then Paul asked, for who having heard rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt led by Moses? Paul is referring to that same tra tra um, tragedy. Verse 17, now with whom was God angry? He in capital letter, who with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpse fell in the wilderness? Verse 18, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who did not obey? I mean, verse 19, so we see that, the, help me read, so we see that they could not enter because of unbelief. So we see, Paul says, these guys came to the borders of eternity, came to the borders of the promised land, came to the end of their Christian journey, but could not make it over because of one thing, unbelief, unbelief. Then Paul makes this stunning statement, because they didn't, watch the preacher, because this is where you come in, because they did not enter into God's rest, rest. Canaan was supposed, Ellen White jumps in the picture again, Canaan was not just a literal place. It was a symbol of God's eternal rest for the Jewish people. And because they did not enter into God's eternal rest, Paul says that promise of entering into God's rest still remain for anybody who wished to enter. Is the church with me? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at it. I, I mean, I mean, in, I mean, chapter four of Hebrews, Hebrews four, verse one. Therefore, Hebrews four, verse one. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Hebrews four, verse one. Therefore, since a promise, are you there? Let, let, look at the screen. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering His rest, let us do what? Fear lest any of you seem to have come short. Of it, I'm in verse 2, I'm in verse 2, I'm in verse 2. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. Here's the text. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not because it was not mixed with what? Faith. I'm in verse 3, I'm in verse 3, I'm in verse 3. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. I'm in verse 4. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and that God had rested on the seventh day from all the works that he has made. In other words, what Paul is saying, God still has a rest remain for the people for his people because those people did not enter in it so that rest is open for you and I but the problem is the very same way they failed on the borders you and I may make the same mistake if we don't believe in other words put simple 
What will cause some people to lose their way is their inability to trust in God. We're at the end. We're at the end. At the end. Let me wrap up this sermon for you so you understand what I'm talking about. Where did, on the borders of Canaan, what was the source of the mistrust? Talk back to me. What was the source of the unbelief? What was, hey, yes, you're, you're silent. Talk to me. What was the source? Who was the source? Who were the elders? Oh, you have a problem. So no, now I notice I'm coming home to you because you have a problem coming up. This is Bible. Who was the source of the problem? The elders. Who were the elders? The leaders of the tribe of Israel. What's the message? Answer. On the, read my lips. On the borders of Canaan, you cannot trust your leaders. Oh, you still don't get it. On the borders of Canaan, your trust must only be in God. Because the arm of flesh will fail you. Satan only needs to infiltrate one leader and the church is in trouble. Oh, let me say one. On the borders of Canaan, your example is not your pastor. Your example is not your leader. Your example is not the officer. Your example is Jesus Christ and him only. So when the leaders stumble, you can still remain faithful to God. Oh, you still don't get it. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. When Jesus came here in person to save the Jewish people, there was another problem. What was the problem again? The whole nation of the Jews were lost as a nation. Why? Was it because salvation came? No. What problem they had? Belief. Somebody said it. Belief. The problem they had was belief. Listen, I, it doesn't matter. Watch the preacher. It does not matter how often Jesus come here. It doesn't matter if God himself, if they don't believe in him, they cannot be saved. You get that? That's why Jesus says, whosoever believeth in me shall not. So when Jesus came, Satan could not stop Jesus from coming. So when he came, he worked on the people's heart for them not to believe in Jesus. And if you don't believe in Jesus, you can't be saved. So, shh, 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 shh. quiet, quiet, quiet. Who was leading the campaign for the people not to believe in Jesus? Who was the source of the unbelief? Huh? What your Bible says? Who was teaching the people not to trust Jesus, that he's a fake? Who was saying to him, you can't be the son of God because we know where you were born. We know your mama and your papa, and your mama and your papa didn't marry you, born out of wedlock, so you are illegitimate. You can't be God. Answer. Chief priests, elders, Pharisees, Sadducees. Who are these guys? Leaders of what? The church. If you don't believe the preacher, read this text. Matthew 27, 41. Put it up there. Matthew 27, 41. Matthew 27, 41. Matthew 27, 41. This is Jesus hanging on the cross. If you don't believe the preacher, then read what the text says. Likewise, who? Priests. This is the clergy. And by the way, it's not just any of them. Which of them? Chief of them. Mocking with the scribes. Those are the secretaries of the church. And who else? 
the elders. <laughs> a lot of this is this is the leadership of the church. And said, I mean, said he saved others. That's why Jesus hanging on the cross. This is the church leadership. He saved others himself. He can't save if he's the king. If oh, Jesus, if he's the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and then we believe him. And when the pulpit says so, the brethren tend to say amen. In these last days, you have to be careful which pulpit you're listening to. You have to know the only reason, hey, 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 the only reason why Caleb and Joshua went in, because they had a personal experience with God. Ain't no leader can tell them anything because they walk with God. They trusted God. So when things didn't look right, and they said, hey, the people said, we can't go. Caleb and Joshua said, I don't care who's over there. God brought us this far, and God can carry us through. The leadership of the church caused the people not to believe in Jesus. Do you know who believed? Who? <laughs> Do you know who actually believe in Jesus? The people who were not in the church. The thief on the cross. Not a church man. Those good for nothing fishermen that Jesus used as disciples. By the way, have you noticed that when God was choosing 12 disciples, he didn't take one of them out of the church? He went, he went on the seaside and he picked up just ordinary men. They believe in Jesus. You know who believe in Jesus? Hey, the rejects of society. Hey, 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 Mary, Mary, Mary Magdalene, who couldn't go through in the church door because she was just a prostitute. She believe in Jesus. You know who believe in Jesus? The centurion. He's not a church man. Ha! But he believe in Jesus. Go, go through the list of people who believe in Jesus and you'll realize they, 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 they're nowhere near the church. Because the church people were fed a doctrine by the chief priests and elders that this man isn't God. Satan, Paul talks about the great deception. Satan says on the board, Satan has it set up on the last days. He will use church. Are you hearing the preacher? He will use church. To destroy your soul. Every time I have a crusade, I tell the people, church is a dangerous place. Because that's where the deception is placed. Hang on, hang on, people. Stay with the preacher here. That's where Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. They'll come in. They'll come in. My name. Where do people preach in Jesus' name? Church. church and jesus says be careful of those who preach in my name where do they preach church in other words jesus says be careful of church you attend in the last days that's why before you choose any church you want to make sure you know it's the right church don't go to a church because it's near you or the singing is sweet or that's what you grew up into because that's what the devil is going to use in the last days find a church that is anchored in the word of the living god that's why I'm still in the Adventist church. Hey, 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 can I say that one? That's why I am still here. And I tell everybody, I have no allegiance. I have no allegiance to the Adventist church. No, my allegiance is to the Lamb. Anytime this church mess up, I'm gone. Because my allegiance is to the Lamb. But so far, this church remains the only church I know that is walking according to the word of God. That's why I'm here. Is the church with me? Well, unbelief. I close by telling you. Unbelief, unbelief is what caused the people in Noah's days to be lost. Didn't believe the preacher, so they die. Unbelief is what caused Lot's family to burn up in Sodom and Gomorrah. When Lot went down there to call the boys, they didn't want to come. They didn't believe it. 
So they die. Unbelief is what's going to happen in these last days. People don't believe what pastors are saying. People don't believe what church is preaching. People don't believe. People don't believe. But thanks be to God. You have the word for yourself. Study the word. Is the church with me? In these last days, study the word of God. Thanks the Lord. We have it in different versions. Different versions. You have it on your phone. You have it on your iPad. You have it. You have it. You have it left. You have it right. You have it. You have it. Study it. David said it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. The only way you can stand up against deception in the last days is if you study the word. So when you hear rubbish from any pulpit, you can say, that's not what my Bible says. Is the church with me? If you don't know this word, you will be the first victim of the deception on the borders of Canaan. So my challenge to you then, my challenge to you then, as we come to the end of this journey, understand that the great deception is coming. Understand that if it was possible, even the very elect would be deceived. Oh, if you ask Ellen White, she's worried about it. She's worried about it. She says, not even, not one in 20 have I seen that is ready. She's worried about it. And you too, you should too, because this deception is great. And what is happening in these last days? A lot of, hey, 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 a lot of people not reading Bible for themselves anymore. No, no, no. They come to church and hear a good sermon for the pastor and went back home. If that is your forte, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. You can't walk in my light. You can't walk in my light. Amen? You need your own flashlight. You need to study the word for yourself. And so as we get ready for the end, let us do like Caleb and Joshua. Amen. <laughs> Ten against two. Ten against two. And those two men stood up and said, Moses, watch the preacher, watch the preacher. What these men say is true. Guys over there are big and strong. Watch the preacher. What they say is true. The guys over there are big and strong. The city is well fortified. It's true. But they say, but if God, if God has brought us here, I sure know he didn't carry us here to leave us. Amen. God who brought us here, know that the people over there are strong. Amen. Amen. He knows that the cities are fortified. And therefore, if we put our trust in him, he will carry us through. My challenge to Nairobi, in these last days, there will be giants in the cities. There will be difficult times to come. You get some turbulence in the church. Don't let that shake you. The God that has brought us this far, we carry us through. Is the church hearing me down here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll get some big surprises and, and among church leaders. Some will shock you, but don't let it shake you out of the church. The God who brought us this far will carry us through. Don't fall victim of the unbelief. We are, made, we are marching to Zion. And I tell myself, whatever happened on planet Earth, I will be in the number. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I will be in the, not the height, nor death, principalities, our powers. Nothing will separate me from God. I have, I, I have suffered too long down here. I'm going home to be with the Lord. I will be in the number. I'll be in the number. And I don't care what happened in this church or outside the church. It's neither here nor there to me. I'll be in the number. I fasten my seatbelt in the church of God. It's going to be rough time, rocky time, but my eyes are fixed on Jesus. I'm going to be in the number when the saints go marching in. How many of you want to be in the number? Oh, Lord, I want 
to be in the number. Stand with me. When the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Sing that one more time. Oh, when the saints, oh, when the saints go marching in. Go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints, when the saints go marching Two. Two. Just two. Two. I want you to go home hearing me saying this. Two. Whole church journey with God whole church passed through the Red Sea, the mighty hand of God. Whole church see manna fall every day. Whole church had all the experience and yet none of the experience that they had with God helped them on the borders. Two. It is troubling to me. So I appeal to my brothers and sisters it's not good enough just to be a member of the church. You have to ensure. You have to make that commitment. Is God, doesn't matter what happened in this church. It is you and I. Not gonna put, I'm not going to give up my trust in you. And by the way, no matter what happened to you in your life's journey, Sometimes the devil will throw you down, get slip up. And if you, even if the devil throw you down and you get slip up, get up and come back again. As often as you get throw you down, get up and come back again. Because I'm going home. Don't let nothing, no job, no relationship, no infighting and outfighting, no criticism, nothing. Let nothing separate you from God is when the role is called up yonder is one hell we're living in down here you can't leave from one hell and go to another hell we're finished we're tired of suffering we're going home in the name of Jesus and I want when that day comes every member of Nairobi Central every one of you listening by the internet every one of you will be able to make it home with the Lord. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Oh God, ah Lord, it's a challenging time when we come to the borders. <coughs> we know the devil, <coughs> we know the devil has camped out at the borders, setting up another big deception trip for the church of God again but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we apply for the help of heaven we ask you God to help every single one of us that we will remain focused on you and you alone that we'll clasp your hands God that we'll walk with you Jesus Lord God, it is our prayer that when that big test come, you will give us your strength and your power to overcome so that we too can be in the number. Thank you for your people. Bless your church. Every one of us will linger a little longer tonight. 
May you help every single one of us to make it into your kingdom. Is my prayer I ask in Jesus' name.